Hi, yes, a million percent it can. I was dizzy 24-7 for two years solid. Um, I had vestibular therapy twice. In the first three months when I had vestibular therapy, it didn't work for me, mainly because I do feel there's a reset period where you're so completely dizzy and off your face that it takes a few months to settle down before vestibular therapy really works, for me anyway. Um, so the first time it, it put me off because it made me dizzier. Um, so I went home and I literally sat at home and got really depressed and hardly went out. And that didn't help. I never got better. So I signed up again six months later to do vestibular therapy for the second time. And when I did it a second time is when things really kicked in because I had to do the exercises every day in the past. You know, if I skip a week or two, I would still be dizzy. So you have to constantly do the exercises every day until you gradually adjust. Yes, yes, yes. Massively affected my vision to the point where I had, um, I went to the optometrist multiple times. I had eye tests. It was so bad. I even went to, um, there's an eye hospital in London, central London. I can't think of the bloody name now, but I had to wait months to go there because I was certain there was something wrong with my eyes because I felt like they were wobbling and shaking. And it wasn't just the dizziness. It was my vision as well. I couldn't focus. Things were focusing in and out. Um, turns out my eyesight is absolutely fine and it was just a symptom of vestibular migraine. So a million percent, yes, my eyes were massively affected in the early stages. I would say, again, once the dizziness started to die down, the eye symptoms started to die down as well. So whenever I have a massive relapse, it's usually due, due to extreme stress in my life. So straight away, I will maybe not see certain friends that can be a bit drama, for example, a little bit of drama there. Even family members, I say no to certain things. I look after myself. I eat better. Um, if I'm really dizzy, really dizzy, I might have a day or two resting where I just rest. But the moment that day or two is gone, um, I try and get up and go out, get fresh air and move. Because movement is what got me to where I am now. Not sitting in the house on the sofa for weeks, maybe even a month or so on end, which is, I have done that before. I've done that before. I avoided going out, I avoided movement, I avoided everything. And the only reason I got better, to be honest, because I was so angry, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go out anyway. I don't care. I'm just going to go out if I'm dizzy or not. And I kind of used my anger to get better, if I'm honest, and push me forward. No, I haven't. If I want to, I can get that. I've also been offered um, Botox, um, which I, I have kind of been avoiding so far. But hey, I'm 42 this year, so maybe it will help. <laughs> Um, free Botox, everybody. Um, but no, I haven't tried the injection as such as yet. I have been offered it. I'm holding off for now because I'm going through a good stage. Again, if things got really, really severe again, I would definitely a million percent consider it. I wouldn't mess around anymore. I'd go back to the neurologist and have a chat and say, look, it's really severe. I need something more because I don't take any meds, guys. Um, I don't take meds unless it's a really severe migraine and I'll take something like an emergency med to take the edge off. I'm not even on Simatriptan right now, by the way. It gives you that burning nasal feeling. Not for everyone, but for me. So I'm on Nurofen if I need it or paracetamol. So I can't speak for myself yet because I'm not going through the symptoms as of yet. But I, I know my mum was horrendous when she went through the menopause and it started back up. I also know a lot of people in the group that were pretty good for quite a while. And then when they started to go through the menopause, um, it, it started back up again, the dizziness, the hormones. Um, my mum's a nurse, and to this day, she swears the hormones are one of the biggest triggers for her when it comes to this. She swears, and I know so many people do as well. And it is funny how it mainly affects women as well. Um, and mine started when I first started menstruating, details, uh, around... 14 years old from around 14 13 14 years old as my body started to change was when it really came on um really full-on headaches and the dizziness started kicking in there a little bit but mainly aura migraine with aura so yeah i would say personally speaking yeah i would say it does massively and um i actually have proof because when they first told me to do it um I did some exercises and slept for like three hours solid and then I was so dizzy I refused to do it again. I literally stopped and this time when I went to the hospital to get it done professionally they time everything. So one of the exercises for example was to have a ball and throw it from hand to hand while you're moving in a circle which is nuts and after you sit down on the chair and they time how long it is until the extreme dizziness starts to die down. That's another reason why if you're extremely dizzy every day, it's hard to monitor the improvements, okay? 
So they time it and I'd be like two, three minutes. I mean, when I mean dizzy, I mean, couldn't even stand up. They'd have to hold me. And I kept doing the exercises for months. Okay. And every time I went back every month, I think it was to have a review. They proved with the timing, I was dizzy for less and less and less after each exercise. It's another thing while I know about vestibular therapy consistency, because the first time I just like, I'm not going to do it. I know, but I was really dizzy, okay, and I was tired and I was sleeping a lot because of the exercises. Um, and the second time I did it, there were stages where I was dizzy, where I wouldn't go home and do the home exercises. I'd have like a week or two off. And when I'd go back in after a month, I wasn't really getting better like they thought I would. You know what I mean? And they'd be like, have you done the exercises every day? And I'd be like, oh, I, you know, I felt a bit rough, so I had a week or two off. And then I actually got a bit of a telling off and they said you need to take this seriously because if you have massive gaps between doing the exercises, you're not going to recover quickly, you know, or to the, to our, the expectations we have for you. And I was like, shit, okay. Um, maybe I do need to, um, do this every day, you know, which was a lot, but it looks like it worked so far. So it's my biggest fear. It will come back. Um, I went through a good few years where it would take over my life where, the fear was so extreme. I've really built my life as in I've got a partner of four years. I'm a stepmom. Um, I have a job now. And my biggest fear is losing everything. So it got to the point it would be an obsession. And I actually had to go back and have some therapy for it again. And that's why at the moment I'm kind of quite gung-ho with ice skating, roller skating and just getting on with it. And that's why I'm not in the vestibular migraine groups as much. Because if I'm in there every single day, it takes me back to that place and it creates that fear again. It's going to come back it's a disease, it's um, a neurological disease, so it's always going to be there. And if I go for the menopause, things like that, it's likely to come back for sure. Extreme stress, it will come back. So I'm just trying to enjoy the time I've got at the moment where I'm in a good stage, if that makes sense, and not obsess over it like I used to. Also, another thing, if I went back to full-time work now, um, eight hours on the computer a day, it definitely would come back. If I went to doing the teaching assistant work I did, I managed to do it for the first three weeks. And after the three week period of the noise, the screaming, the kids, the, the moving about every single time, every um, semester, it would come back. And I'd have to have time off work every three week point. I'd start to get sick again. So I know for a fact I cannot do eight hours a day anymore. I've had to make career changes. I cannot um, I can never do work in a school ever again. There's just no way. So you just got to understand, I might look like, yeah, I'm okay, everything's fine. But if I put myself in that situation daily, okay, I will go back to where I was. It's another reason I had to make long lasting lifestyle changes, basically. That's what a lot of people usually have to do if they're very severe, like I was back then.